So this is going to be my final post regarding this attic project. I apologize to those of you who've either read or responded to my multiple posts. This has just been a lot to wrap my head around. 1925 balloon framed house. And my struggle is what to do with these eaves over here. So first let me show you that these gable end walls were completely open in the stud cavities. We have air blocked those with two by fours. They're actually backed with rigid foam and foam adhesive. So there's actually a one and a half to two inches of foam under those and then they're foamed in. And we got those pretty well good and sealed up. But one contractor wanted to blow insulation down there. But after we read about the risks of uh, holding moisture against the wood in a house of this age, we decided that we will uh, not go ahead and do the walls, at least not this time. So um, we have a few of these dropped closets over here. You'll see here, and there's the vent stack that I still have to seal. We've been blocking the open stud cavities here in these dropped closets. Uh, I'll come around this side and show you uh, one that's further along. See, so these were all open cavities. They've gotten lumber and rigid and foamed in where possible. And yeah, this attic was sparkling clean a couple weeks ago, but uh, I've yet to go behind myself and clean up all my messes. So there are no soffit vents on this house. Now, it's, a, it's an old house, so it's leaky. Uh, I could actually see daylight over here by the roof, and for that reason, I went ahead and installed baffles anyways to just keep an air channel open there. And uh, this side is my big question. So I'll come over here and let everybody take a look. Um, I was going to do the same thing and baffle these just to keep an air gap open for when we insulate. Um, now. Where you see this rigid foam here, there is like a drop ceiling for a closet. It's so like a dropped soffit along there that connects to a living space. And uh, we just wanted to air seal that and block it off. The previous owner had insulation packed all into these soffits and maybe we should have left well enough alone, but we, you know, it was really, really gnarly from a few roof repairs. So we vacuumed that out. But let me see if I can get closer here. So this soffit, goes all the way down and that is uh, an exterior wall and it runs right through a living space when it takes a turn. And this was balloon framed. So, you know, all of these exterior walls were completely open, completely open. And I'm not sure if there was ever fire blocking put on the first floor. We think there might have been during some uh, light remodeling, but in general, up here in the attic, all of these stud bays go all the way down. So these ones connected to a drop closet below. I definitely wanted to seal those off. Now these here, we have no soffit vents. We have gable vents. People who have come up here have said the roof and the attic seem pretty dry. They didn't think we were having any moisture issues. Originally, I was going to keep the air gap with the baffles and block off, uh, I can go over there and show you, block off the rest of that channel with rigid foam. Here's my concern. If the exterior walls along this way open directly up into a channel that meets those soffits, like I am pretty positive that they do, then by putting these baffles here, even if I rigid foam up to the baffle, like you see in this one with the closet area, Am I not just creating an open air pathway for those exterior stud cavities below to just pump conditioned or partly conditioned air right up and out into the attic? And there is a ridge vent up here um, out of the house. So originally I wanted to keep an air channel open because the house is so leaky. Even though we don't have soffits, I'm pretty sure that there's some degree of airflow through those stud bays and up the roof, so these ones here are not the drop closet. This is originally what I was going to do. It's a messy homeowner special, but it, it's hopefully effective. Um, but am I just channeling that air that I don't want escaping right up and out the roof? That's my big question. We are now into the 20s and 30s uh, Fahrenheit here in Michigan, and we need to blow in. We need to blow in within the next week. And I just cannot decide what to do about these soffits. If I'm just going to be escaping air and defeating the whole purpose of my air sealing, then I'll go ahead and fire block those right there and just 
hope or assume that there's enough airflow below to keep that part of the roof deck and then maybe leave some of this upper baffle so that the deck still keeps an air gap when we blow in the insulation. But I would cut off the channel right there. So separate lower and upper in the name of air sealing and not escaping any more air out of those walls. Uh, if anybody has any uh, ideas about what I'm doing here, uh, really in regard to whether or not I should completely seal or leave that air gap, uh, you know, completely seal the upper and lower here or uh, leave the gap open as I have it there. Uh, I would love to hear from you because we just, uh, we can't wait any longer and I need to finish this job. All right. Thank you. Anybody who uh, watched this and sorry for the complete mess up here. I, I swear the condition we found it in was incredible and we've remediated and cleaned a ton of it up. And then I have come up here and just made a ton of mess with my own uh, fiddlings. So, all right. Anybody with any suggestions, appreciate it. Thank you.